told you the last couple of weeks, we've had some, some good conversations internally. Um, it's, it's helped us in the last couple of weeks. Continuing that process this week, it's, uh, it's, it's led to making the decision to move with Justin as a starter. There's Bears head coach Matt Nagy. Tommy, as the Bears get ready to meet the Vegas Raiders, admitting that uh, a major shift here with the new framework and building a new identity with Justin Fields, the quarterback, Bill Lazor, the offensive coordinator, calling the plays and accelerated development here, sparking this change, even though Andy Dalton is ready to play and will be the backup this week. Yeah, you know, Jeff, I think it was inevitable. When they went out and they selected Justin Fields in the draft so early, you knew the competition began. Even though they did anoint Andy Dalton as QB1, and you have to respect everything that he's invested in his career, you got to continue to investigate the improvements of Justin Fields. And I'm excited to see what the future holds. I think the biggest uh, convincing moment, really, for Matt Nagy and his, his staff and, and the coaches is that how he bounced back from Cleveland. Uh, he, he was determined to make sure that didn't happen again. We heard it from Justin throughout the course of the week advancing the Lions game. And I, I think, he, again, he's proving that no stage is too big for him. And the adversity really fueled this performance against the Lions and, and puts him in a much better position. The quarterback, Justin Fields, takes the snap, has time, looking, rolling out to his right, eyes downfield, going to tuck it and go right inside the 20 to the 15, tight ropes right, and gets a chunk. Nine-yard line, Bears have entered the red zone again out of Justin Fields' scramble. The Bears' victory over the Detroit Lions at Soldier Field on Sunday, I called it an attitude win. The first snap of the game, you go one back, three tight ends, you're going to mash some people with that, and that's exactly what they did. But the building of this attitude started immediately following the Cleveland game because they got went into a team meeting, they looked at the tape, they had to look at it constructively and critically, and then they had to make their plan moving forward to the Detroit Lions. And you're exactly right. I think what they displayed on the field was a completely change of attitude and you know everything else that you needed to get a win at home. You know, put it on the offensive line, okay? At a rough game in Cleveland, the whole offense did, but hey, put it on us. We're gonna clear the way. Yes, there was everybody blocking. I love the fact that everybody got involved in the blocking. And we almost forget they even threw Alex Bars in there as an extra guy. So they completely had the mindset, we are gonna have a balanced offense. We're gonna run the ball when we want to and when we need to. Well, you know, the thing about it, even Matt Nagy brought it up, is you look at the performance of the blockers, include the tight end position, include Alex Bars, then put in Darnell Mooney and Allen Robinson. Every one of these guys had a role in the blocking effort of a football team. And I think that's the most important role that these guys can have because they're all going to do their jobs. Darnell caught big passes. Allen Robinson caught big, important passes. You know, the tight end took on a role that we haven't seen of, with that ferociousness style of blocking that um, those guys put on display. And they were complimented by the offensive line that I do think came in with a, an attitude change and they put it on display. Gritty performance indeed for the Bears. Defensively also gritty because Yes, there was some bend, no break, but boy, they did not break in the red zone. Goal to go, you get seven stinking points out of four trips in there. That's that's really a good job. And you, you, you turn them over, the crowd got into it. Uh, yes, teams are going to drive the ball between the 20s in this league, but you, you shut it down when you get inside the red zone. And, you know, you got to compliment a, a bunch of people, but I got I to gotta tip my cap to Alec Ogletree and Roquan Smith, 22 combined tackles. Ogletree had 10 solo tackles. Roquan had a blitz sack. The guys up front got after the quarterback, so a really well done job there with the front seven. Whenever you talk about the performance of the inside linebackers of any football team, it has a lot to do with what they're doing up front. And the numbers that you're able to play up front defensively is allowing these guys to play fresh, play physical, and play fast. And I think that's really important for the overall success of the inside linebackers but it also spills of those outside guys. Because you talk about all four of those guys, you know, when you talk about Khalil and you talk about Robert, you talk about Atachu and you talk about Travis, Travis Gibson. Travis had all a of these guys, yeah. man, if they can increase their roles, it's only going to increase the performance of the defense overall. Okay, now the bounce into Vegas against a Raiders Remember, team. Remember, it's a business trip. It is. A, oh, hey, listen, I, 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 I hear you there, you know. Uh, I, ho I hope it's a business trip for the Bears in terms of, you know, the whole freight. Anyway, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. I hope they, they have a game plan that you take with you out of Vegas and keep populating through the rest of the schedule. So you look at what the Chargers did to the Raiders 
And again, the Raiders have been digging out of holes all season long, and they made it a game at the end, but they couldn't finish. What, how do you attack these guys defensively? Let's start with that. I think you got to derail the quarterback position first and foremost. So if you look at the stats that uh, Carr had within the first three weeks of the season, they were MVP-type numbers. 375 yards passing, at least two touchdowns each game. He had his two touchdowns, but he had less than 200 yards passing. So what do you got to do? You got to make it really uncomfortable for that offensive line. This offensive line is going through growing pains, and some of them haven't really got up to where they're going to be someday throughout their career. So again, attack up front, make it uncomfortable for Carr. And, and Mr. Gruden over there will want to ball up his fists as, as well. He'll put in three tight ends, two tight ends, and run the ball with Josh Jacobs and, and try to get ugly. They got a really good fullback and Alec Ingold as well. So brace for that angle as well. But you also have to make sure they don't take the top off your defense. Yeah. And there are still a few communication problems on the back end of the Bears secondary. So watch out for Henry Ruggs. He's the speed guy. Yeah, he runs well. They got a tight end, unlike a lot of others in the league. I haven't even touched that one yeah. yet. That's, but, that's but again, on its own, you know, Darren Waller. You can't ignore him because yeah. if you're talking about taking the top off of any defense in the league and you have rugs and you have a tight end like that, you got you know that intermediate where you can go deep or you can go that intermediate, and if he gets the ball in his hands in open space, tough tough guy to tackle. Essentially, it's the third consecutive week Bears facing a, a backfield that you know Jacobs is yeah. well regarded. You know, maybe not be 100% right now working back through thin, some things, but then you got Waller, and he is more like a wide receiver in a tight end's body. You know, I look, look back at our notes from 2019 when the Bears played the Raiders in London, and that was a very physical game. The Raiders set the attitude and the tone for that game right out of the gate. Waller had only two career touchdowns going into that game. Now he's blossomed. He, you know, that was just like kind of the beginning of what was becoming a big time tight end in yeah, this league. So where are the Bears defense and the matchup there with Darren Waller? You know, when you talk about the coverage responsibility, it's going to be, you know, a, a, quite a, a difficult effort for whomever covers them, whether it's a safety, whether it's a nickel corner, whether it's a linebacker. And they have every guys at every one of those positions that can cover them. However, you're not going to be able allow him to run free. You're going to have to get a hit on him at the line of scrimmage. You're going to have to try to make him you know, reroute his path so it's not efficient for the quarterback to end, understand exactly where he's going to be. And that's the whole thing and the whole tone with the John Gruden offense. It's called to perfection. It's not, you know, be in a, in a varied area. So I think it's, that's what it's going to do. You're going to have to make the quarterback dysfunctional and you're going to have to get in the path of that talent and right, tight end. Let's talk about the Bears offense against the Raiders defense, Denzel Perryman. Uh, very highly regarded linebacker, gets a lot of, a lot of damage done in the tackle game. Their secondary, no doubt, is going to have some injury issues yeah. from this game. So you could be looking at a, a declining depth there. And then they've got a couple pass rushers, namely Max Crosby. He is uh, a relentless pursuit guy. He likes to race the edge, so you got to make sure you protect the quarterback from Max Crosby. He had some early success here in the, in the season, but how, how do you want to attack that defense? You know what travels well in an opponent's stadium is four tight ends that can block. Because you're, a run game. you're talking about these tight ends. They can assist in the run game, make the run game better. They can also assist in the pass protection and help your offensive tackle before they go out and routes. And they can increase their role and their importance to this offense. I really like what I saw out of the tight end position hole. J.P. Holtz, lead back, you know, as a fullback, tight end. Jimmy Graham blocking, Cole Komet blocking. Uh, you know, you look at a couple Jesse of blocks James. by Jesse yeah. and Jimmy Graham. They were nasty. Holy yeah. smokes. Check out Playbook this week because they're going to be highlighted. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And that being said, so Jared Cook, the tight end for the Chargers, they found a way to get him open. The Bears have not targeted the tight ends a ton. It's been a topic of conversation with head coach Matt Nagy, offensive coordinator Bill Lazor. Their time will come. Maybe this is the game. Right. Yeah, that's what it is. It's about a process of improvement and development throughout the whole season because you're not going to go up into a press conference and ask Matt, what are the tight ends going to do this week? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. It's, it's right. it, you know, you have to see and you have to guess throughout the course of the game. Every one of those tight ends are talented to do every, you know, whatever is required of them to block on the move or go down and catch passes. So last week they were able to get Darnell Mooney and Allen Robinson involved in the game plan. Eight catches, 188 yards. The same is capable for this tight end group. When you need them the most, use them, but use them where you need them the most. The most difficult guy to, to, to cover on this Raiders team, in my opinion, is Hunter Renfro. 
So out of the slot, he, he's a dangerous guy. Yeah. That's somebody, that's gonna be a big challenge uh, for anybody. He finds a way to get open, an outstanding route runner, very creative, and certainly a heck of a tackler too, if you saw that <laughs> yeah. on, nice on the fake punt tackle, about the, uh, the ball out of there and, and uh, made a, a play that will be on highlight reels for the rest of the year. Allegiant Stadium will be rocking. We know the Raiders fans will be there in mass, but the Chicago migration That's right. will be significant. So be loud and proud in Vegas. We'll have it for you on News Radio 105.9 WBBM, starting with a noon pregame and a 3:05 kickoff. That's going to do it for Bears game preview with Tom Thayer. I'm Jeff Joniak. Thanks for watching, everybody.